Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. I have been playing a fair bit offline and uh, I've learnt to land on things. So, first landing was on the Mung. There we go. Then I landed on Minmas. And today I landed on Gilly. So, I thought I might go land on Ike. Uh, because then I would get, you know, another 500 odd signs, perhaps more. It's fairly far away. Must be worth a fair bit, I assume. So I've unlocked a fair bit of the tech tree now. And I'm coming up on some of the last stuff. I need to get to a technological point where I can go to Jewel and all of its moons. Because there's a treasure trove of science to be had there. But I'm just taking the easy fruit at the moment. So let's have a look at some of the vehicles I've been using to, to do this. So the Mundlander Mark 1. That's what took me to the to the moon, to the moon, and uh, you can see it's fairly simplistic. Five tanks to get up into orbit, and uh, then some sort of engine down here. I don't even think it was nuclear at the time. A pointless ladder. I didn't realise that I wouldn't need that when I'm on the moon. Some gears, a bunch of RCS which I don't really need either. A big heavy capsule on top, uh, and that's that's all there was to it. It's a fairly straightforward vehicle in that respect. One mainsail and four skippers. Let's have a look at the Munlander Mark II. I don't know that this thing ever went anywhere. Yeah, I think it was just an attempt to get something bigger and better. Um, it's possible that this went to Minmas. I'm not entirely sure. But I got... Um, I really wanted to get three of these orange tanks, which is two of these X-32 tanks. I want to get three of them up into orbit for long missions. This is two of them, essentially, because it's four of these half-sized ones. So we move on to the Munlander Mark III. Pretty sure this has never gone anywhere. Yeah, this thing pretty much shook itself apart. This is when I started my attempts to get three tanks into space. Um, Munlander Mark IV I think is the first attempt at doing docking instead. I thought okay let's start working with docking clamps and take these things up empty. I wish these ones were marked as full. Take these things up empty and fuel them up with a refueler. Um, but I'm not going to go there yet. Instead I made Deep Space One. And Deep Space One is what went to Gilly. And here it is. The equivalent of three orange tanks. Two of these, two of these, and one in the middle. And uh, yeah, this went to Gilly. It's got my regular sights set up on up the top here. Uh, lots of lights. The lights managed to glitch out and make the whole thing glow. And uh, a heap of boosters. And this guy uses a bunch of its fuel getting it safely into orbit and I fixed that in Deep Space 1.1 this is essentially the same vehicle with some minor adjustments so a lot of sort of testing and manipulation so some more thrusters some late stage thrusters and the only thing that I could really do to change this is to to make it asparagus but you notice how this sort of is overlapping if I made a asparagus, I think the physics would glitch out in a bad way. So I'd probably have to make this 6 instead of 8, and then I could do asparagus. Asparagus is where you peel off one layer at a time uh, to get the most out of the fuel for the weight. But this vehicle is probably good enough to go to Ike and get a whole bunch of science by landing there and then coming home. That's what I'm hoping to do with it. So. Let's give it a go, see if we can get it in orbit, and uh, I can't remember anything particular with this that was wrong, though I have unlocked some new science -y type stuff since then. So accelerometer needs to be properly settled on a firm surface. So I could take this to other worlds and get seismic readings, which sounds pretty cool. Let's see if it's... Uh, I think I just changed something here, I'm just going to reload this. And we'll make a deep space 1.2 with some minor adjustments. Okay, so here we are again. 
So back to utility. Yeah, this thing's pretty small. So we'll just stick that there. We can use that when we get there to Ike. See if there's any seismology. Now the communitron. Um, let's see. The comms DTSM1 is what I've been using. 15 electricity per packet. 20 electricity per packet. Packet size 2 megabits. Packet size 2 megabits. 0 0.6 megabits per second. What? This uses more electricity. And sends data slower. Looks like that's the case with all of these things. They get worse. Was, am I reading this wrong in some fashion? I want to see if this is the the pretty one. Stick that there and tweakables. Come on, tweakables. Okay. Well, you know what? We'll replace our current one with this anyway. As a, in theory, a little, a, you know, upgradable step, maybe. Hopefully that will be okay. Other things that we now have in utility, we should have the big battery, the 4K battery. Here it is, and underneath here I have the 1K batteries. So we'll get rid of those. Just put in four of these guys. Oh dear. There we go. So we'll just wait on that. That's the 1k. It's 0 0.05, 4k. Yeah, so it's just four times heavier. So we've got ridiculously large amounts of electricity and we've got plenty of solar panels anyway. Chuck a storage, don't really need that at this point. This thing, radio isotope thermatic, uh, thermoelectric generator, um, would give us electricity if we don't have line of sight with the sun. It is essentially a um, emergency last resort sort of gizmo. So you can put this almost anywhere. Yeah, just slot it in. This is four times between all these tanks. Might be worthwhile just sort of hiding it above or below the current ones. Because I know these things rotate around, so I don't really want to get in their way. I don't know, this is a good spot. There we go. So, emergency electricity backup right there. I have no idea if these things expand or not. I don't think they do. Uh, anything else of use? Probably not. We've got lots of new structural things that I haven't really looked into yet. But if we make a, you know, Deep Space 2 for Jewel, then we'll certainly start playing with some of the newer stuff. Okay, let's see if we can launch this guy. Bouncy bouncy. Disable landing gears. No, it's always on, it's very annoying. Here's the lights. Let's see if we can see how this communitron thing works. Um, kind of difficult to get to it. Extend. Oh yes, that's the pretty one. Transmit with data, done. And in it goes. Okay, so seismologist, Majiga, log. Um, yeah. Don't like throwing science away. <laughs> okay, and I guess I'll be right back. Alright, so, back. 
Yes, I really did just go and capture that science so that I didn't have to take it with me. Can't help myself. Here we go. <laughs> Perhaps this is about 80,000 or 80 kilometers and uh, crazy lights. And we can deploy our electricity gi givers. Uh, and we are kind of spinning out of control at the moment, just waiting till we get closer to you know, 70,000. I'll put the engines on and push us down to our orbit location, which is going to be around here. And we'll see how far we get. Before we use these boosters, it's strange the way this thing reorients itself. It's no rhyme or reason to it. Apoapsis is currently at 84 kilometers. That's fine. Once we hit space, I'll start moving. There we go. Right, so this this doesn't actually last very long. So we'll have to stage again in a second. But it will get us uh, enough of the way that the nuclear engines could take us through. almost have an orbit, almost. So keep tapping it to the horizon to be efficient about it. I'll be back. Alright, we've almost reached our aquapsis in five seconds, and we've almost got an orbit with periapsis. And we have enough altitude that we can fall to achieve our periapsis, uh, which is what we'll probably end up doing. So now that we've passed our apoapsis, we'll start falling. And you see our altitude's going down slowly. Well, not so slowly. But there is our periapsis. So now we just have to keep edging to the horizon uh, until we finally get there. And here we have our periapsis is now over 70 kilometers. So we have achieved orbit. And we've got 104 and 83. That's good enough. Now we can start thinking about the mission. And as you can see, we've used up some of our mission fuel to get here. About 750 oxygen, um, 610 liquid fuel. And what we want to do is, in this case, we're going to Duna because we're going to visit Ike. Um, so if we go into Duna should see Ike right here, which is our target. So, we'll zoom in our way back out. And then we just press shift, uh, tab until we find our way back to Deep Space 1.2. And we still need to get away from Kerbin. 
So we want to get away from Kerbin in the direction Kerbin's going, which is this way. So basically we want to start, we'll accelerate down to our periapsis and then start to slow down. So this is when we want to accelerate out. So, and you see how this is not parallel with our line. So we actually want to start maybe around there. No, that's not good enough. There, that's okay. That's that's pretty good, and it's slightly ahead of where we're headed. Okay, so can we do that with less fuel? Apparently, it's pretty common to use about eight minutes worth of delta V just to leave here with the four nuclear engines and this much fuel. Uh, so this is going to happen in 13 minutes. So let's align ourselves. Ooh, big heavy craft laden with so much fuel is uh, our boosters floating away and there's our target dot this is one of the problems with this game is that it's going to be seven minute burn with these nuclear engines and you can't really fast forward that. You can go four times faster but then everything starts shaking about and it's kind of a bit annoying. So I might, might have to look into mods to see if there's any way to, to fix that. We've still got our lights on. I'm going to turn the lights off. We don't need them on. Not at the moment anyway. And in 12 minutes we will be doing our burn. The beginning of the burn. It's just our course is just a little bit here. Away. And we won't achieve this parabola. I've discovered that out using this craft multiple times, that it just does not get the numbers right. And the thrusts for the delta V from the nuclear engines just doesn't seem to match what it expects. But that's okay. Okay, so I expanded the orbit a little bit, and because I wasn't going to come out accelerating away from the sun, I figured I would just go around the orbit and do it again until we get what you know the escape trajectory we want so I might even start accelerating you know beforehand alright so we're getting our escape trajectory right now so now as we are angled away from Kerbin then we're happy right and that should do the trick in theory I say in theory because more often than not, when you try to leave Kerbin these days in the latest patch, for some reason, you get pulled back in. So we'll see in a second if we're fine this time. And I think because we're accelerating away from the sun, we're probably going to be okay. But when you try to decelerate towards the sun, uh, it's a different story. Yeah, there we go. So we've come out on the right side. And we can start looking at what's required to get to Mike. All right, I've spent the requisite time fiddling around, trying to find something that will intercept. Uh, and I'm not 100% sure, but this will work, and it's only a seven-minute burn. Uh, and that's, you know, roughly how long it seems to take to burn everything with these engines. So uh, I'm just going to fiddle some more, and then if that's this is the best we can do, then that's the best we can do. Looks like that's the best we can do, so I'm just going to fast forward our way all the way around. Problem is that we're just a little bit ahead of Duna. So when we reach Duna's orbit, Duna's behind us. So what we're going to do is we're going to translate a little bit around by turning. Which will slow us down to the point where we'll have an encounter. It's a very short encounter. Okay, you know, to slow down to nothing to be able to see. Uh, encounter, so we've got 18 hours. That's more than enough. But first we need to get back around to our periapsis, which is our best opportunity for speeding up. So once again we fall 
and then we push our engines to accelerate to keep that speed up. And as you can see, we are now uh, reaching our apoapsis. Yep, and now we're speeding up. We are now falling past the sun. That's the way that works. Uh, because gravity is acceleration. Yeah. Of course, we all knew that. In uh, real life, you can't really do missions this long, but Kerbins, Kerbals, they're pretty resilient, apparently. When we get closer, we'll set up our target tram maneuver. But, you know, we're still counting down by days. So, 15 hours, to figure our position, our, our marker for this burn. The good thing about Duna is you don't have to really adjust your angle. Uh, yeah, 0 0.2 degrees is pretty close to Kevin. So that's nice. And that 0 0.2 degrees is probably us getting into orbit badly as well, so it'll disappear with this maneuver and what? Probably? Maybe? Okay. Be back. And here we are at the start of another very long burn. Boring burn. Which you will get to skip. And away we go. the color changes. So we now have a Juno encounter and Juno escape and if we get the sun out of our face Juno encounter is 65 days 23 hours, Juno escape 66 days 5 hours. So we've got about 6 hours to stop which is going to be fine because it only takes you know a few minutes to stop. Okay let's speed things up so we can whiz around to the other side So what we've done is this turn has caused our orbit to be a little bit longer so that by the time we get here, Juno will have caught up. Otherwise we would have been ahead of it. And you can't, you know, vectorize speed up and slow down because that increases or decreases your orbit. So you kind of have to turn. Um, yeah. For want of a better way to describe it. <laughs> Which I'm sure there are much better ways to describe it. I, I'm not a astrophysicist at all. Just a Kerbal enthusiast trying to learn the lingo and the, the mechanics behind everything here. Okay, so we're getting in close now. I just slowed it down a little bit, counting by hours. I don't want to overshoot this encounter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop out of to normal speed and quick save in case I make some ridiculous mistake here. It's really not <laughs> not worth going round and round and round the sun over and over again when you can just rewind and try again. I don't consider that cheating. Okay, so we're getting close now. All right. So our escape is in six hours, like we predicted. And there is Duna and Ike. So what we want to do is get into an orbit 
that's big enough and allows us to intersect with Ike because that's our true target. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's try that again, shall we? We slow down until all of a sudden it decides to bend. Here we go. Bending now. Okay, so that's a, a nine minute slowdown. That's quite a long burn. And it looks to be the cheapest we can do, pretty much. Oh, if it's what we're going to do, it's what we're going to do. Oh, what the... What was that? Okay, whatever. So, let's try this again. That was an encounter with Ike. That was an encounter with Ike. So, uh, it's a 30 minute encounter with Ike. I'm sure we can do better than that. So, so once we get there, we can slow down a lot more. And um, this is going to be roughly in the direction opposite of our current travel direction, which is what this open dot is. The crossed dot on the opposite side of the globe, the yellow one, is the perivector, the direction, the opposite direction to the direction we're moving. So you can see our, our target and our peri-direction are actually lined up because our goal here is to slow down. And we need to wait an hour and 49 minutes before we do this, otherwise it'll be too expensive and we'll miss out on this maneuver. Alright, here we go. 10 minutes of slowing down. This is why I wanted to build a craft with this much fuel, so that I could actually slow down for a landing on Ike. And this isn't even enough. We're going to have to slow down even more when we get to the other side. I really hope we have enough fuel for this. The good thing is the return trip home is mostly falling back to Kerbin. So, <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, we're getting close to the to the end of this burn, and it's hopefully going to end up cheaper than the 10 minutes that we were prescribed. We'll see. This is ever so slightly twitching. Get it to turn in and find our encounter with Ike, at least with Duna, one or the other. Let's uh, attempt to uh, double speed up here and see if we can survive the physics. A little bit off track, we're shaking a little bit. Okay, we got movement. Here goes things. So our goal periapsis here, around three million. Twenty-eight seconds to go. And as soon as we see the weird colours, we stop. Ha! Huh. Oh, I think we may have found. A serious orbit by accident. Something weird happens. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that is, but I'm really interested to find out. Uh, I will resume. I'm going to save it here in case that's a load of codswallop. <laughs> and I'll be back in a second when we have our seven day encounter. <laughs> Moving in, it looks like we're going to have a decent Ike encounter for a few hours. Okay. 8 hours 21 minutes encounter, 11 hours 9 minutes escape. So we've got about 3 hours. Well, 2 and a half. And uh, getting closer now.
Alright, here we are. We're coming back. So, first things first, save again. Um, let's see if there's any science to be transmitted back. We have been out here before, but I don't know if we've been out here before. Yeah, it turns out we have. Okay, so we're not going to get anything until we actually land on Ike. And to do that, we, we want to get into a nice slow orbit. This periapsis is 400 million, uh, four, 400 kilometers. I don't know where the million was about to come from. It's not bad. Um, let's slow down and be captured, like so. And there, let's see what do we get. We get 27 second burn. Gives us a fairly good orbit straight off the bat. 40 second burn gets us down low. Alright, that's, that's going to be good, no matter what. Uh, we can straighten this orbit out if we start at the periapsis. And that puts that at 91. And it leaves the apoapsis out there. This is the closest apoapsis we'll get. So that's it's definitely worthwhile doing. And once again, this is going to be the opposite side of the globe to our current travel direction. Let's spin this thing around. Now, I'm not so sure about the atmosphere on Duna. We may be able to land there, we may not. Might have to come back out and try sometime. But I know there's no atmosphere on Ike, so we can definitely do that. We have one hour, so we'll check we'll check the meta information in a second. Like so. So the meta information for the Sun Duna. Three kilometer atmosphere at fifty thousand. Escape velocity. That's about half of Kerbin. It's a third of Kerbin gravity. Hmm. Might be possible to do it without any anything more than what we already have. Okay, so I'm just gonna carefully fast forward here. Uh, move our focus back to Deep Space 1.2. There we go. <whistles> no modem sounds. It's part of that mod that adds the atmospheric sounds. Uh, this one's just a wee bit annoying. Definitely, if there was an option to remove that, I would love to know it. Okay. Um, so here we are, we're just basically doing a straight slowdown. And, you know, may as well just start now. It's a very short burn. And it's all about the periapsis. We want to get that as low as we can. As long as we can without crashing. We don't want to crash. We want control over our descent. Which is why we're going to pick a number that's not too high and not too low and edge our way in. Okay, so we have a periapsis at 94 and as we can see in the top view we have a lot of room still when we get to the periapsis uh, then we can get lower but we can actually continue to pull this in until it looks like it's too close right and we really want to land on the bright side besides facing the sun so we have electricity 
and we can see what we're doing. So we could we could do that, but it would make more sense to um, pull in the apoapsis and use that as the periapsis and, and come down this side. So we're going to make our way around to the far side of the Ike, the dark side of the Ike. And once we're there, we'll find our mark again, which again is on the opposite side of the globe, to slow ourselves down even more. This will actually move because we're not quite there yet. But this gets us at least close enough. All right, we're basically there. Just wait for the run up to you, which is pretty much now. Um, and we watch our apparatus shrink down to something reasonable, and then we just stop. And then once we get around to that side of the planet, we will begin our landing maneuver. We we'll probably do another one right here because we want to come down over that side. So we'll add a maneuver here to pull that in. And that will bring our landing down to roughly there, which is pretty good. That's, that's not bad. That's going to be an 8 second burn as well. So just need to find that position and um, I'll get back to you when the excitement starts all right two and there we go we now have a maneuver that will bring us down on the light side of the Ike okay so we're kind of committed well not really we can leave any time we want um, but when we get around here we're going to start to burn off a lot more speed. This is a fairly uniform planet, should we be landing on it should be pretty easy. So when we're here we're going to decelerate a lot. Something along those lines. We might even start back here, maybe. So we want to basically not crash. And we're already at a fairly low altitude at the apoapsis. So it might be worth starting to slow down even then. I am not an expert at landing on things, by the way. I'm much better at crashing on them. This will be my fourth planetary body or body that I have. I right. So leading off orbit speed, and I don't want to go too far into the dark side. And once we've bled off enough orbit speed, we can then move to surface speed. Right. Okay, so see the orbit and surface speed are very similar now. And that's because we're not going to have an orbit. We're going to crash. 
So we can use the surface speed to come down vertically at any time we want. But we, we have to kind of guesstimate as to when to do it. We need to get down to a very low speed, but we don't want to do it too soon, and we don't want to do it too late. Uh, so maybe 30,000 meters we might start burning. Mm. We're such a dangerous guess. You know what, we're going to start slowing down a little bit more now. What if there's different biomes? That would be interesting. get this down to you know something low reasonable 40 50 something not 230 we want to glide down onto the planet not hurdle hurdle hurdles and hurdles are different Just let that float for a bit because we want more drop than we want angular and to do that you kind of need to burn a little bit until you get this target right on top of vertical so that orbit speed is really low okay so we're pretty much going straight down now. Pretty much, not quite. And we just really need to balance our speed with our altitude. I think. At least that's what I've done in the past. And then hope you don't hit something too rocky and roll and fall and break all your solar panels and stuff like that. cut back when we get a little bit closer. Where's our shadow? Where's our shadow of here are our lights? As long as we're around, you know, between four and six minutes per second, we'll be fine. We can really control that quite well. Oh dear, oh dear. Not good, not good. Ok, 
Okay, here we go again. Stay upright, stay upright, stay upright. Yes, yes. <gasps> Hooray! Ah, oh, wow. Um, very hard. Almost three attempts. Uh, one failed attempt. So, first things first. Report and transmit. Cool. And uh, you can go EVA. Uh, nothing more to be had here. Uh, however, we can turn on our RCS. So, and plant flag. Whew. Okay. Ike landing, uh, twenty fourteen at 5.35 a.m. This is the Deep Space 1.2 took us all the way to Ike. Landing was very difficult due to the lack of pilot skill. <laughs> it would be nice to have something with a broader set of legs so it didn't really matter if I came down at a weird angle or not. And uh, let's take an EVA report. Take a surface sample, and now we need to get him back in. RCS. Come on. I see us. Up, up and away. Everybody's away. Everyone's in the 
Bold. Right. So now we can send that stuff off. Um, well, before we do that, log, keep, log, nothing, log, 45% for statistical data, give me a break, and uh, transmit. Well, that's just sending everything. That's, that's a bit of a shame. Right. Do all of these. Do all of these. And I guess I need to take another surface sample. Keep. Keep. And EVA again. That's all we need. We need to go home. Which is a tricky part. All right. We are good to go. I think. I hope. This is how much fuel we have left. Less than half. So, um, here we go. We want to thrust up and then angle at 90 degrees after a bit. See where it gets us. It's off. So I'll cut back when we're making decisions. Alright, so we've escaped Duna, and now we need to get back to Kevin. Angle's great, we just need to find a point at which we can decelerate and meet Kevin. Alright, so there's our first attempt. Kevin's back here, so... Experiment with some of these positions, like the descending node. So, we would be behind Kevin at that point. Now we're getting close. He's hoping we can get a proper encounter. <laughs> Alright, that will get us home. It is 3 minutes 43 seconds, but I think we have enough fuel for this. And we just have to get to the other side. So uh, I'll do that. Cut back later. Minor problem, had a crash. So we're going to refigure this maneuver. And I believe the trick was to do it sooner. No. This is really close, but 
I'm not sure how close it was when the quick save happened. Come on, me. Aha! Right. So, how far away is that? 12 hours. Okay. Now, we can do that. Let's get our target on. And I'll be your back. Here we go. I think it was like a three minute burn or something like that. We'll know in a second. Three minute and forty seconds. Yeah. We should be okay with that kind of burn, I think. It's always one of the most tense. You don't know if you have enough fuel, and uh, you're about to find out. I think I think we're going to be okay in this case. Uh, again, we're watching for the purple orbit to magically appear in 15 seconds-ish. As our blue dot slightly creeps away from our target, which is. There we go. We have quite a bit of fuel left. Much more than I expected, but we're going to need a bunch to slow down when we reach here because we are going a fair bit faster than Kerbin. Kerbin. 9,200. And our apoapsis will be going. Let's get rid of this. Um, hard to say. We'll be going faster though, because we're going to be climbing out. Alright, we are almost there to our Kerbin encounter. that four hours and closer I probably should save here I have missed these things before and they make the games that much harder then it really should allow you to just cut back from time at things like this just automatically cut out of time when this happens just instantly because honestly there is never a situation where I don't want to do something about an encounter. Ever. Alright. So here we are. Almost home. Now it's a matter of slowing down. And we can do that a number of ways. I like to go start it halfway through and then figure it out from there. Because we aren't really after a stable level. We're after a low periapsis. And going right here gives you the highest periapsis. The sooner you start, the lower the periapsis. But then, this is Kerbin, so we start running into all kinds of nonsense. Okay, so that's at 5 million. This would give us a, a reasonable shot at getting a very low periapsis. And then we can decide to just dive straight into the planet or slow down some more. Um, like so. That's not too bad. Five hours away, four minute burn. I don't know, five minute burn. So, we'll see if we can make it home on that. Okay, I'm using four times burn speed. And you can see it's just sort of down here. It's just sort of wiggling backwards and forwards. That's basically the physics and over simulating things at high speed. doing we are slowing down until this number is very low. 
Is that like getting there? Too no, that's not. Just looks like a bit of a gravity bend there of some sort. One million. And, oop, that is an incredible time. <laughs> okay, that, that might just do the job. Uh, we can probably slow down more as we get closer. Uh, yep, there we go. There's a lot of debris around with the, um, the this whole mission. Okay, so... We kind of want to burn off speed as much as we can. Uh, what we could do is actually speed up and get an orbit and then slow down at the periapsis. Which is what we're going to do, because we have a lot of fuel to burn. <laughs> a lot of fuel to burn. And it's, you know, not entirely coming out of Jebediah's pocket. This is the direction we're going, so... Yeah, yeah, I'm not okay, bro. Yeah, I'm not okay, bro. Yeah, I'm not okay, bro. Yeah, I'm Like so. Okay, then at the periapsis, we will slow down and get ourselves a nice, neat orbit and have a fairly typical re entry. So here. Do that. We're not going to stick to that exactly, but it'll do to start with, and it'll give us a direction at that point in time. But more importantly, it gives us a nice T countdown to our periapsis that we can actually look at instead of having to try and hover our mouse over the location and hope it doesn't move. Some of the trials and tribulations in this game are entirely created by the user interface. And I doubt deliberately if they think it was a fun idea to do it that way, then they're nuts. I'm just attributing to the fact that it's still a beta. Actually, I think it's an alpha. It's an alpha. They have a, they have a lot to do to make this game. Um, you be friendly. It is definitely not at the moment. Okay, so this is good. This is close enough. Building off quite a bit of speed here. Speed that would otherwise assault us in the atmosphere, and that's not actually a part of the game, but it should be. <laughs> Probably. Enough so that, you know, if you actually bother to slow down like this, you're okay, but if you just hit it straight on, you're in trouble. And we're just going to let this burn down to a point where. Maybe we'll hit an ocean, which would be ideal. Let's just tap this up a little bit so we're not going to hit an orbit where we're going to slow down. And yeah, we've got plenty of fuel for this. We don't even need to do this, we could have just gone directly into the planet, so... Have five or six minutes of fuel remaining from that mission, which is not bad. Uh, if we can take off from Duna with these four nuclear engines, then we have the craft and the capability to do so right now. I'll have to look that up and see if it's going to be worthwhile trying to do. Well, we've passed the periapsis for a bit, so. Just 
adjust that. Try again. Continue to lose speed until we either use up all of our petrol or fuel. The main is straight. The atmosphere slows down further, which is what's going to happen on the far side. Of the I'm going to my face some. I want to see if we can find in the ocean. Probably. I think once, once we hit Atmo, somewhere around here, we'll probably head towards the ocean. We'll see. Hopefully. Is that a lotion? Or is that a landmass? Really difficult to tell. Okay, what I need to know is my altitude. Okay, we're still quite high. Right now we're about to hit atmosphere and then the slowdown will really begin. Okay. Well, let's attempt to aid our slowdown. But one thing I always forget to do, and I really want to do right now, is reconfigure these parachutes to open at 750. No, let's go, let's go 1000. Right, let's pull in our solar panels. The lights can do what they want. We have a lot of battery, which we're about to lose because we're going to eject this. Um, well, pretty much now. Kind of light for a quick save, probably. <laughs> Let's just speed up until we hit the atmosphere. There's really not much to do until then. And at 20,000 we can deploy the chutes and they will start acting as drag. I like to do it more at 18,000. I like to get through this upper atmosphere before doing it. There we go. Oh. Use the SAS to slow down some of that tumbling and hopefully stay alive. Turn on our light. Can't really see where we're going. This vehicle often lands right on its nose, <laughs> which is pretty funny. We'll see what happens this time. But we've got a lot of speed to bleed off. And I will dare to speed up the parachute descent. Wow, okay, we're up in the mountains, I guess. We might be able to get a uh, soil sample, probably. And I'll cut back when we're on the ground. Nice touchdown. Right. Bob. EVA. Okay. And grab us a... 
Guess we've already got that one. On the EVA. Right. There we go. Mission to work complete. And for that we got 754.8 science. Well, as is customary, we can spend it on camera. Now, I know that there's some really good stuff in here, particularly this micronode? No, I can't be it. I beam, I beam, I beam. Structural panel. Cubic octagonal strut. I think that might be it. Like it's really small and you can use it for for adding struts to things. Um, kind of curious to see what's in here. So I could get two of these higher tier things. Or I could get two of these and this. So, I, you know, no one uses this basically, uh, which is a real shame. This would allow me to start playing with jets properly, and that would help a lot as well. And it would tell me what's in here. I don't know if sending probes is really worthwhile. <sighs> you know, and it would be good to get the final bits of science going, but. Not necessary entirely because our next vehicle is going to be taking us all the way to Jewel. Or we go back to Duna and try and land on it and take off again. One or the other. Um, so, let's start with jets. Okay, it looks like some sort of extra flight here. And that's more of that. This won't give us anything new. This probably will. Well, let's find out. Advanced unmanned tech. Cubic lightweight probe. Remote guidance. Remote guidance unit. RCL01. RC001S. Interesting. Alright, so we have enough science left to unlock both of these or unlock this. And I think that if I'm trying to get further out, I'm going to need more lightweight materials and more structural integrity. And we're not going to need ion. And I don't really want to start playing with SSTOs. I don't want to play with jets yet. Uh, and we don't care about rovers yet either. Although it would be fun to go roving on the moon. And there's probably a whole bunch of science to be had on the moon still. With the current vehicle I have, I could just hover around the moon and get science that way. And I may try and do that. That would be really interesting to try. So I think we're just going to grab this. There we go. We are getting very close to completing everything. That's 600 there. 2,200, 3,300, so 4,000 more science. I think a trip to Jewel would possibly unlock everything if we could get all the science back. And I was thinking that such a mission might require a super duper ship. Other than that, or, you know, six small ships, but where's the fun in that? Um, a super duper ship with 18 science juniors. Uh, <laughs> and six or five landers because you can't land on Jewel itself but the moons you can land on all the moons could be very interesting to have five landers okay that's clearly a stupid idea five trips would be more than more than enough um, and finally let's go see how much garbage we have left over, left over. so here's our lovely flags we don't really care about the flags it's the debris that this is all stuff that was part of our launch. Well, until next time.